Hi, this is Professor Dan Kernler. This is another video on our Math 120 statistics series. Uh, we're going to actually do two sections together. Here we're going to talk about random sampling. The first section, section 1.3, is about simple random sampling. We're going to also talk about stratified systematic cluster and then what we call a multi-stage. So simple random sampling, say we have our population of 12 individuals here. It would basically be drawing numbers from a hat or using a computer to randomly generate certain numbers, however many you need from that population. So say we need a sample size of 12, we might say, well, I'm going to randomly generate something and say, just for a case of example, I, I choose 2, 5, 8, and 10. So then I have my sample 2, 5, 8, and 10. The key idea here is that every four person sample is equally likely. And so you can get this by choosing random numbers, drawing from a hat, etc., where they're, they're randomly chosen. It isn't me saying, well, I want to pick 3, 8, 5, and 10. That's not random. Um, it has to, something has to randomize it somehow. Um, ping pong balls and you're mixing them up and whatever four pop out, that can do it too. All right, so that's it. Quick section there. 1.4 other sampling methods. We've got stratified, systematic, and cluster. We're going to talk about that as well. So stratified sampling is there might be some particular characteristic I'm interested in, and I want to make sure that I get a proportional number of my population from each of those categories. So what I would do here is I would take my population and split it up according to that strata, whatever that would be in this case, uh, my fancy people icons here, it would be color. And so now if I still want a, popular, or a sample size of four, in order to make it proportional, I would choose one from the blue, two from the red, and one from the green, and I would again do that randomly, either drawing numbers from a hat ping pong balls, using a computer, etc. So I could draw one blue, two red, and one green, and that would get my four person sample. The key idea here is there might be, there, there has to be some characteristic that splits the population up that you are interested in, and you want to make sure to get a proportional sample from each group. So that's, uh, that's those are the strata. Um, and the, the key here is it's proportional. So if you have more of one particular group, you need to have more from, more in that sample as well. Uh, the last one, no, there's two more. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, systematic is the next one. So systematic is putting them all in line and then choosing every so often. In this case, if I want to choose four of them, I would need to choose every third. And you can think about that if you just divide 12 by 4, it gives you 3. So I'd need to choose every third. And then to make it random, you would start at a random point between 1 and 3. So for example, I might randomly start at 2, and so if I start at 2 and go every 3, it gives me 2 to 5 to 8 to 11, and that's my 4. So here the population has to be conveniently ordered somehow. This is sometimes, uh, people can be sampled this way if they're coming in and out of a store. Um, it could be uh, assembly line, products coming off an assembly line. Now you got to be careful there if your machinery has some cycle, and it, it has something where it spits out, you know, there's some every fourth, and if you're sampling every fourth, you might not get a good sample because maybe it's that that fourth one that's that's getting screwed up, but you're sampling the one next to it. So you have to be a little bit careful depending on the process. So the strategy there is below where you calculate k, which which is how often you're going to sample, and then you start at a random point between one and k. The last one is the one that's usually gives people the most trouble. It's called cluster sampling. So in cluster sampling, cluster is like a group. So in cluster sampling, your population has to already be grouped somehow. Uh, maybe city blocks, maybe egg cartons, maybe classes at a college. So here I've got cluster, they're clustered somehow. And so if I want a random sample of four, I would randomly select two clusters. Now here are the important things. This, the, the clusters each have to be mixed. They have to represent the population. So when the college does this, we actually do this sometimes to do surveys, and we survey everybody in a class, and we randomly select a class and choose everybody from that class. Um, when the college does that, the classes are not really representative. Like this class, Math 120. It's not really representative of all ECC students. So the way they compensate for that is they choose lots of clusters to try to get a more representative sample. 
if you are again manufacturing something and you're doing quality control and they're all mixed in there you know one you know one or two nice big clusters might be fine maybe one box and you're just going to inspect everything that you're making whatever it is that you're making within that box that might be fine for that so here this is only when the population is already grouped together and clustered like this you're not sorting them at all they're already clustered and each of the clusters really represents the population a couple other methods um, convenience is a really horrible strategy it's not random those are the people that are at the mall taking your sample or going door to door or some of my students with their project in the past have just gone to a lounge area and asked students who would answer them that's not random that is not a random sample it is never gonna give you a representative sample so we're gonna mention it because people use it um, but it is not a representative sample a multi-stage um, is just what you think is when you've got multiple sampling strategies happening within uh, the same the same sample so the the po current population survey I'm trying to remember exactly how this works I am not gonna remember it I've got a link to it um, I'll see if I can put that link below here oh shoot I can't remember but that would be like say you are producing um, well my son's huge into Legos so we're making Legos and we want to make sure that the little Legos that get spit out are the right color and so we want to do that so what we would do is we'd say you know what let's go to the very end of the line and look at packages of these Legos and say well I've got a thousand packages of them here oh let's do this let's say we wanna we've got a little kit that makes a spaceship we wanna make sure that that kit has all the parts that's needed so um, there's some different things I could do here but one thing I could do is I could go to the end and look at this big crate that has 200 of them in them I'm not gonna look at every single one so I'm gonna do a cluster by selecting one crate to look at there's a you know there's whatever or one box to look at whatever so there's 500 boxes here each of them have 200 of these kits in them I'm just gonna select one of the or maybe two of the boxes so that's a cluster and then within that cluster I'm gonna do simple random sampling and select 10 of them to analyze specifically to look to make sure that they have all of the parts they need so I've got multiple strategies within one so that's an example of a multi-stage some students actually do a multi-stage for the survey for the class project so that's something to think about so let's summarize these strategies here we have um, the simple random sample where we have our population and just randomly choose four of them with a random number generator or drawing numbers from a hat. We have stratified where the individuals are sorted according to some criteria. We have systematic where the individuals are already in line and we're choosing every third or every fifth or whatever the situation might be. And then we have cluster random sampling where the students or uh, individuals are mixed together and we're choosing a certain number of clusters. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, check out the links for the sections below and after this. Hopefully it should be above me. Um, and feel free to comment below. You can note the particular time in your comment just by putting the number, um, the, the time as a, a one colon six, not one colon 16 or something, a minute 16. And YouTube will link to that. So if you want to ask a specific question, you can do that below. Thanks for watching.